Welcome to the Fantasy Thinker. I'm Jared Kodamanch. And uh, today, I was thinking about art and what we consider art and what defines art. And this is something I'm always thinking about, it, my whole critical thinking life, I guess. And um, so I wrote an essay about this like a low, about 20 years ago or so. And, uh, you know, and it, it never, um, never went away. I always kept thinking about it. And so I was just going to uh, go through this essay and try to transfer it into a, like a video essay, kind of updated for today. Um, and, uh, you know, we here in book two like to think about literature, you know, mostly as our main uh, consumption of an art form. Uh, but this, you know, this could apply to any kind of art work, really. Um, like, what is it? What defines it? What does it mean to create it? Um, you know, so art, what is art? It's, you know, what is that? Is it that quintessential moment of inspiration that transcends vision and is poured forth into a form with all these elements intact here? Uh, or is it, or is it a test of time that relegates art to either a lofty status or some kind of yard sale bargain? Um, is art defined by the creator or the audience? Uh, if nobody sees a work of art, hears, tastes, whatever, um, is it still a work of art? <laughs> so you know, Webster's you know the dictionary it speaks of uh, like you know, aesthetic principles related to what is beautiful and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, you can always look up definitions in that manner, but that's not quite enough for me. Um, and, you know, hopefully uh, it's not enough for you guys either. Um, so if art is an interpretation of the world around us, you know, that is like art imitates life, um, then maybe we can go further by stating that art is an interpretation that continually grows with time. So clothing is kind of an interpretation of skin, right? Uh, music is an interpretation of sound. Painting is an interpretation of sight and so on. Um, of course, there's, you know, different levels of complexity involved in artistic creation. Clothing has grown, grown way beyond throwing another animal's skin over your own, and, and painting has moved away from cabin walls. You know, uh, Over the centuries, some forms of art have become extremely complex in their creation, like uh, you know, music, literature, painting, architecture, film, comics even, um, etc. Uh, these artistic endeavors have all reached a high degree of subtlety uh, that has moved beyond the casual observer and um you know could require a trained eye to appreciate everything that goes into them and yet all of these forms of art uh still have the simplest beginnings and can be practiced and appreciated by anyone inclined to do so uh so creative expression is what gives birth to art can the act of creation in itself be considered a form of art? Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's let's correlate here. I, I got a I had a couple of stories. Um, on a cold October night, the director and I crouched down next to a trash bin in a dark, enclosed alley behind a city building. The loud humming sound of a generator grates on our nerves as much as the wind whipping through our insufficient outerwear. I grip the microphone boom with white knuckled intensity and stare hard at the tiny monitor attached to a tripod. In the monitor, I see the blue and orange palette cast by the filtered lighting that we rigged up. It shines on a fire escape six stories up and enhances the jagged angles and overbearing moodiness that the building's inanimately possess. The director adjusts the camera yet again, trying to get that perfect shot. 
action, he shouts out. Into the frame steps the actor, dressed in his character's preferred black leather jacket, jeans, and boots. He's carrying what looks like a body over his shoulders. He gets to the edge of the fire escape and struggles to lift the body up, getting ready to throw it. Director yells, cut! Just in time. Shot wasn't right. My nerves fray a little more. We were only getting one chance at this. The police already came by this night. They received a report of a dead body in an alley. <laughs> they seemed disappointed that it was only a dummy. Uh, they told us to stay inconspicuous and keep the noise down. <laughs> After they left, we started the generator to power the lights, and we had to yell to be heard over it. <laughs> so much for quiet. Uh, so... The director yells out to the actor that uh, he needs to grunt louder when lifting the body. And uh, and when he th throws it as well, he wants that grunt, you know. Thumbs up all around. Now it comes. The actor goes up, heaves a body with an ape-worthy growl. It flies through the night air, twisting in true flesh-and-bone fashion. Time comes to a stop as it hangs in the glow of artificial luminance, luminescence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> crash! It lands perfectly on top of the trash bin. We hold our breath, afraid to end the moment and possibly ruin the scene the actor checks out his handiwork as if he's really a killer walks off frame cut and we both let all a whooping holler of excitement and a little fear too i'm shaking now not because of the cold <laughs> is that not art hmm Correlation 2. I'm tied to a post below decks on a storm-tossed ship. Seawater reaches my thighs and sting my wounds. I've been beaten to within an inch of my life by a foul-smelling bakamono who is captain of others of her kind. She so shows an unnatural intelligence for such a barbaric race of creatures. Suddenly a slithering voice whispers promises to me of returning my katana. For the price of taking the captain's head, I readily agree. My bonds are cut, and my katana is dropped in front of me. I spin to catch a glimpse of my re releaser, but all I see is the motion of a swishing tail beneath the water. No matter. I have a bakamono to kill. The ship rocks harshly as I climb to the deck. Hurricane force winds drive me down to my hands and knees just in time to grab a stray rope. The, this line keeps me from tumbling over the gunwale as a ship tilts to the port side and dumps the remainder of its crew into the deeps. I spot my prey through the driving rain, still clinging to the wheel, desperately trying to save her ship. I slowly crawl over to her, catching my breath in between sloshing waves along the way. She doesn't notice me. I draw my katana out of its sheath with practice precision, seeking to cut it down where she stands. My downward arc is true and bites into the flesh. Amazingly, she still stands clinging to the wheel. When she turns towards me, her eyes glow red and begins to transform. Thick black hairs sprout from her skin, then fangs, claws, and flesh contort until she's larger and rat-like in form. I knew it. One of the dreaded Henjokai. Then I am tossed into a world of blackness, and the ship is capsized. Now, this happened in a game. That was my character. And it happens in the imagination of four good friends sitting around a sturdy rectangular table, scattered across the table with books, papers, writing implements, dice, large piece of glass on top of a large cloth mat resembling graph paper, and lots of miniature figures in the forms of every conceivable fantastic monster or character you can think of. We gather to create fantastic scenarios and worlds I'm dreamt of before. Is this not art? Hmm. <laughs> Corollary three. I sit in the living room of my humble apartment. 
The sunlight washes through the window, bathing the room in a dusky glow. I tense on the edge of the couch, holding my cheaply bought electric bass in my lap, fingering out tones through a borrowed amplifier. I'm going through the rigorous finger exercises, trying not to let the frets buzz. And then I grudgingly make my way through various scales. I, uh, it becomes boring. I turn on some music. It flows throughout the room, every note perfect in its all-encompassing beauty of surround sound. I search for inspiration, try to play along. Nope, these guys are too good, too complex. Master musicians, I get frustrated. I'll never get there. I shut it off. I grab some paper and start drawing lines on it. I begin to play notes that sound similar to what I just heard. But less, something chromatic, something more my speed. I improvise and divert to another pattern, a more basic C minor scale. I continue until I have some semblance of a song. I repeat it, making the transition smoother, holding the notes that need to be held and getting down my timing. I write down the tablature. Using musical notation would take too much time, and I'm really not that good at transcribing. It's the lazy way out, I know, but I don't record this for others to see. It's only to improve my memory. Writing it down will give me a visual aid to recall it later. A week later, I'm bored with what I wrote, and I throw it away. Is this not art? Hmm. So, as you can see, out of uh, all these things that I've done here... um, you know, a couple have found themselves into a, uh, a form that others can judge for themselves. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of stuff has been relegated to the status of uh, useless or amusing entertainment. But yet when you immerse yourself so fully into a project, knowing full well that it may never yield the hopeful results, you know, like recognition as an artist or money, who knows, Um but is that not the creative expression realized to its fullest? Is that not art? <laughs> so I believe it's important to create and uh, maintain a healthy respect for the creation process. I think that's um, what a lot of this YouTube is for. Uh, you know, once the creation process is done, once the art leaves the creator, then some you know, some connection may be broken, may not. Uh, but then the art stands alone to be critically compared or contrasted or what have you. Um, you know, art is truthful, defining, and real. It, you know, though some of it probably doesn't go beyond the creator's own critical eye. You know, I'm fully aware that any films that I made may not be the great films by critical standards. Uh, But the moments we had creating those films are powerful statements to the importance of art. So what is art? Everyone, whether they feel it or not, has the ability to create something from their imagination. I think uh, art is inherited in life. Art portrays life. It is continually, it is a continually growing interpretation of life. Um... One piece of art created 40 or 400 years ago has a different meaning, a different interpretation to us now than it did for those in the time of its origin. Uh, So art is creation defined. The true beauty in that is the fact that we are all our own creators. So get out there, create, and if no one sees it, eh, so much Say la vie. <laughs> uh, you didn't do it for them at first. You know, you're creating art and you do it for you. That's how art starts. Um, that's what I believe. And then, uh, you know, eventually when you do get paid, it's great. But, you know, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. But uh, all to all you YouTubers out there who are creating this stuff, and uh enjoying it please keep doing it it's uh it's really good and um 
it is our uh, right. Is this not art? Hmm. <laughs> Be good to each other. Thank you.